Shut up and sit down. Hello everybody, this is Andy from Big Mac's Workshop and Painting Studio and today I'm painting a Blood Bowl Goblin Looney. It's a little dual weird chainsaw and I just couldn't resist it because hey, it's a goblin weird chainsaw. So I'm uh, making a start and I'm doing it with a slightly different paint scheme to normal. Uh, so straight on with the airbrush. As always you can do any of these techniques with uh, what I use for the airbrush for by hand. It's just easier uh, with the airbrush to do it. So I'm using Vallejo's Violet. Uh, as the base colour, because I'm going for a sort of a purple colour scheme on this guy. Now I don't know whether that's going to be the colour scheme for the entire uh, team or not, or just for special weapons, or if I'm going to redo them at a later date. I haven't decided that, but you know, it's just something I fancy painting because I don't use purple a hell of a lot. So yeah, I'm just getting a uh, couple of decent coats of that, just uh, as an all over paint job. Just give me uh, an even playing field to work with. And I'm working now with GW's Jean Sealer Purple. Now, if you're using this for an airbrush, you've got to make sure you've got to thin it down plenty because uh, GW's paint do tend to be quite thick. And uh, I'm using that aimed at all the raised areas as a first highlight. Now, this is a quite a pinky colour, so it looks um, it really is uh, tricky to get the right shade to uh, go over a violet with a pinky uh, purple. So uh, you, I wound up having to mix things to get this right, uh, which is not really what I wanted, but it is what it is. And uh, so I started adding um, Scale 75's Miskatonic uh, Grey, uh, again using um, the cone to aim towards the higher areas, uh, getting them uh, highlights in really nicely. Now, Obviously I painted this model in one piece, uh, thinking back I should have done it um, with a uh, chainsaw separate, but you know, lessons learned and all that sort of good stuff. So once I've got the uh, enough with the uh, Gene Steeler purple uh, with the Miskatonic grey, I then added um, about a 50-50 mix into that current mix of off-white, uh, which is a Vallejo colour. And I just use that for the extreme highlights um, through the airbrush, just to finish off that um, right shade. So once uh, all that had settled um, and worked, um, working on the skin, uh, whilst I'm waiting for all that to dry, and I'm doing things a little bit differently. I wanted the sort of more blue um, shade to the skin, so I started off with Vallejo's Gunship Green. Now uh, it's obviously a, a sort of a more militaristic sort of colour. But you can make it look quite cartoony with the um, use of uh, a blue shade and appropriate highlights. So you still get that classic goblin sort of feel. Uh, the level work will start off with um, Rhinox Hide. Uh, she was a nice, deep, sort of reddy brown colour. Really works well on boots. Um, and uh, makes for a nice, uh, solid colour for any kind of level work you're looking at doing. As you can tell, I'm using a nice big brush on this, as um, I'm only base coating at the minute, so I don't really uh, worry too much about the appropriate um, brush thicknesses. The cloth on his top was painted with a star, uh, base colour of cold grey, which is a Vallejo paint again. Now I chose uh, two different colours for the uh, cloth work, as uh, I wanted it to look like some kind of... Um, team uniform but not look too um, dull so I wanted uh, the grey I wanted to use a grey to work with the purple but I didn't want it to look a bit I didn't want it to look like pajamas uh, which you can often do with sport kits they should have done goblin with a chainsaw with pajamas that'd be awesome that would be cool if I uh, if I'd have thought on maybe some kind of onesie would have been an interesting look but I, I didn't go out down that route and his, uh, his trousers were base coated in a Vallejo's grey blue, um, which you can't quite tell uh, particularly well on the uh, model at the minute, as it's um, such a blue colour, it does look a little bit purple under this light. But trust me, it is a very much a grey. I'm starting with some washes now. I'm using Games Workshop's Dragon Off Nightshade uh, on his armour, and also I'll be doing that on his skin as well. 
this is to get that blue sort of, uh, that blue tone I wanted to uh, go through the armor and through uh, his skin work. Now I kept the uh, the wash on on the armor plating to a just a recess wash. I didn't want to get too much everywhere, um, but on the skin it was a full um, it was effectively a flesh wash. And I just used a couple of thin layers of it just to uh, build that um, nice deep um, shading, especially on the skin. Uh, I wanted to have uh, the recesses really rich. Now, apologies about this uh, particular uh, camera angle. I was a bit ropey there, but got some decent footage for a change. Um, you can actually see the model rather than just my thumb, which is always a nice start. Obviously, as you can see on the uh, cloak, sorry, on the cloth work, it was um, washed in Agrax, uh, which you can't go wrong with, really. It's just such a good um, muted uh, colour to uh, wash anything with. Uh, I, I did get it on some other bits. Um, if you feel the need, clean it off. If you don't, just leave it, because it often leaves some good, uh, some, some good results. Just make sure you put it on spe um, fairly thinly, as you don't want to uh, ruin your look. I then went around uh, some of the uh, weapon si his weapon system and some of the armor plating as well, uh, with a good old fashioned non oil, uh, just to finish out picking them details, uh, making everything just really stand out. Now this is a f uh, thin down non oil, uh, again. Uh, made sure I did a couple of layers just to um, get it what uh, get it where I wanted. Now, as you can see, it's quite glossy at the minute. Uh, so at this stage, when it's uh, looking a bit glossy, I tend to uh, throw a matte varnish down just to um, give me an even uh, an even look of how the model uh, I'm looking at uh, actually looks, so I can see through the shine. Uh, it just allows me to get a better idea of what where I'm going next. The um, brass work, bronze work, whatever you want to call it, is uh, hammered copper, which is again Vallejo. Uh, you see me using a whole bunch of videos now, uh, and it just gives you a really rich sort of ready, um, ready orange metal color. Uh, so uh, it's a color I've really started to uh, enjoy using. Uh, it does look well when you've got the uh, appropriate shades on it. And as always, metallic black for the uh, silver work as its base layer, because it's just awesome. It really is a good colour. Uh, if you don't actually own any, I would suggest you pick up metallic black from uh, Vallejo. Uh, it just saves a lot of effort um, with uh, having to black things out, or uh, it can even save you from having to wash stuff, because it's just such an such a deep rich uh, black color that it doesn't always need the uh, non oil to make it look good and I'm highlighting the um, jersey again uh, the jersey is uh, first layered up with a cold gray over the top of the agrax and that gives, uh, that gives you a nice first layer highlight um, over any uh, using the uh, original um, coat to a uh, get them uh, highlights started. It's also a nice way of tidying things up. Once you've done that, and then uh, mix a bit of off-white into it, uh, it's probably about 30% off-white at the minute, um, working them highlights further up, but keeping them subtle enough uh, because I'm using uh, the original colors, uh, it really makes it, um, makes the highlights they don't stand out too much and they really do look well uh, at the end of the day. Now as always this is uh, the way I paint things uh, which often looks a bit scruffy until the end of it um, as I tend to bit and bat between different sections. And a, finally, a final highlight with the off-white is a second layer of uh, cold grey with off-white in there. Uh, so it's around about 70% off-white now. Uh, to the cold grey.
and you can see that jersey just starting to come together. And I was wrong, there's one more highlight to go, which is just purely off-white. As always, don't use straight white, because straight white often, uh, well, let's face it, you've got nowhere to go with uh, straight white. It also comes out a little bit chalky uh, at times. So I went with the off-white for the top highlight, uh, which obviously left me uh, plenty of room to move if I wanted to go back and do another layer or two of highlights where you, I would have been able to utilise white itself. But I didn't want a white shirt, I wanted a sort of a grubby, sort of off grey shirt. On to the trousers, um, back to uh, grey blue, uh, which again, as I said, is Vallejo. And picking out the uh, upper reaches and smoothing out them shades uh, where the non oil was sitting in places I didn't want it to be. And just generally tidying things up, getting that first highlight in. And you've guessed it, I've uh, mixed grey blue with off white uh, to get that f uh, highlighted shade in there. <laughs> Obviously, Dodgers wanted me to use Rakar Flesh, he can get stuffed. I use what I use. Only if you suck. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I'm using off white again. Now this is, uh, I do um, at this point I realise it's a very very bright highlight, and I'm not totally happy with that. So I will be coming back to that at a later date just to make it look better. Uh, with the gloves, uh, obviously I've already gone over with non non oil because non oil. Uh, this is a even mix of Rhinox Hide and Terra Earth from uh, Vallejo. We do tend to use a lot of uh, Vallejo paints these days, although um, our uh, GW paint collections are ever expanding as well. It's just nice to have a mix of everything because you get different opacities and translucencies from uh, from the different types of uh, different brands of paint. So it's nice to try uh, try out the different ranges. So the uh, Rhinox Hide and Terra Earth, uh, Terra Earth are going all over the uh, all the leather work, the belt, the gloves, uh, boots, etc. Uh, just to pick out them highlights again. Once I'd got the uh, First layer down with the Rhinox Hide and Terra Earth. I now use just a straight Terra Earth. Obviously it's thinned down a bit. I don't want my paint to be too thick and clunky. Um, so it's uh, just Terra, uh, Terra Earth at this point in the, uh, just the top range, regions of the uh, where the um, light will bounce off the leather as such. Um, all the way up is strap, all the strapping and things as well. So onto the uh, purple highlights. Uh, this was um, jean sealer and off white mix. I'm just keeping that towards the uh, the edges of the um, figure. Uh, do a lot of work on his um, chainsaw and his mask, uh, primarily to uh, just to bring them hard edges out. Uh, didn't want the uh, the rounder edges to look too out of place, um, like on his uh, shoulder pads and such, etc. So I just kept them towards the upper uh, areas of them. The skin was then layered up with where is it? I put it somewhere. Uh, gunship green with a mix of off white. As you can see, I'm using that same uh, highlighting technique across the entirety of the uh, model, which gives it kind of a cartoony look, um, which Dodge pointed out. Uh, I was just sort of uh, going with what felt right for the figure. Um, when I'm looking at it, it is a quite cartoony looking figure, so it, sort of, it, it did seem to lead me to uh, painting in that way uh, more than I necessarily intended to. 
So it was very, uh, it was a very natural process picking these highlights. Um, it seemed to uh, work for me. Now, final layer of highlights, a bit more off white mixed into that green, uh, just to uh, bring them um, real raised areas out around the edge of his nose, etc., and top of the ears. Uh, really make him look like he's uh, out in a sunny uh, football pitch. Taking his chainsaw for a nice stroll. So I'm going to do a bit of battle damage at this point and I've gone back to the uh, same method as I've used on a few other things uh, recently um, which is the Rhinox Hide uh, with a, a very very knackered brush which I've chopped down to become some kind of soft stippling brush it just seems to work really well for that particular job um, you can always use your uh, old dead brushes for other things uh, which is something what I've found works uh, fairly well for uh, this sort of uh, look and it just it, it figured it's like he's a goblin I'm not exactly known for hygiene or being particularly good at doing anything really so I figured he'd probably spent a lot of time on his ass. Uh, part of my French um, getting his face kicked in so uh, once I've done um, a layer of the Rhinox side I go over with uh, Terra Earth uh, into the same sort of areas just to brighten up some of them uh, dark brown sections I wanted the um, the damage uh, and rust patterns to look um, interesting and keep things uh, varied. Obviously, at this point, go over with uh, black metallic, uh, metallic black uh, inside the, um, the brown sections, uh, making sure that you leave some of the uh, brown all the way around the model, so it actually looks like the uh, layers of paint have been peeled off. Once that dried, threw a bit of oily steel on uh, to the upper areas of the uh, damaged sections as well. Um, throw, started to throw a few highlights in there just to make the um, the metal look like it's reflecting the light as always. And then a final highlight of the Leo's Chrome, which is very very bright. Uh, we'll tell you that now. It's a very bright colour, uh, so just be careful when you use it. It's really only for top. Uh, top highlights, so you just got to be uh, very sparing with it. I also use it on the uh, edge of the teeth of the chainsaw as well, just to finish that um, section off. So as you can see, it's quite it, the um, the chrome really does stand out against the darker metals. What I've used, so just be careful when you're using the, when you're using things like uh, silver. Or, uh, or chrome uh, just be aware of what result you're going to get so I tried a bit of riser rust on this as well which is the GW um, dry brush compound uh, which I had to get quite heavy handed with in order to get get, uh, get the paint off as it really really is hard work to actually uh, <laughs> get to do anything um, so that's something I'm going to have to look into it might be, uh, it might be I'm just doing it wrong but I'm just throwing a, uh, throw a bit of uh, riser rust on there just to bring out, uh, break up them hard silvers. So there we are. After an, after an oil wash and a matte varnish, um, this is what we've got. A very grubby uh, looking goblin on some kind of multi-flocked multi, uh, multi uh, base. Nice and simple base. Um, and there we go. If you've got any questions, please ask in the comments below. If you want to uh, see more of what we do, Hit like, hit subscribe, share with your friends, and we shall see you in the next one.